How's it going, guys? Pleasure <laughs> to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Victor. How you been, bro? I've been good, bro. Just, uh, you know, learning some new things, working. But it's, uh, it's been a good time, man. Yeah, welcome back, bro. So earlier you, you had a couple questions like, save those, save those for later, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I'm excited because as photo booth business owners, there's a big event coming up. I think you heard of it. It's called PBX, the Photo Booth Expo. Yeah, yeah. You going? I'm not 100% sure right now. Okay. Um, but I'm thinking about it, though. Okay. Think about it. Are you? You're going? Heck yeah, I'm going. Yeah. So I didn't get to go last year. <clears throat> my excuse to myself was because I was too busy working on my business. But when I realized what Photo Booth Expo was, it doesn't make any sense for us not to go. So what it consists of is there's going to be keynote speakers. So it's people that have been in the photo booth industry and that mastered a certain aspect of the business mm-hmm. go out there and they, they speak, like keynote speakers. So they have presentations throughout uh, the 19th all the way to the 22nd. And this is going to be in February, right? Mm-hmm. So every day there's something popping off, something new. So they'll cover either gadgets and software and then you have another speaker that focuces on seo and then you have another speaker that spe- just focuses on ads right Got other it, speakers yeah. that are going to show you hey this is how you go after a certain niche and then throughout that time frame there's going to be a bunch of merchants and vendors victor so imagine you and i walking into a warehouse filled with different vendors that have beautiful different types of photo booths bro you'll feel like mm-hmm, a kid okay. in a candy store <laughs> so that's how everything huh yeah, so if you can't make it this year, I'm going to grab as much footage as I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to try to interview as many people as I can, and I'm really going to try to bring some of the, the value, the insight to the, to the audience because a lot of folks, they're busy, and they have families, and it's all the way in Vegas, too. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's what it's all about, Victor. You going to put some videos out there? Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, I'll stay tuned, bro, for sure. Yeah. yeah. How's that juice, man? It's good, man. It's good, yeah. Yeah, what you drinking? I you have no idea what I put in there, huh? <laughs> like, Bro, there. all I saw was cucumbers, dude. That's all I know. Yeah, there's cucumbers in there. Uh, so, the Photo Booth Expo, definitely see if you can make it next mm-hmm. year. And if there's still time, uh, I know you stay busy. Show up, Victor. This year. You won't regret it. You know, I got some insider information on the Photo Booth Expo for people that have gone, that have been going. Mm-hmm. And someone told me, David, you're going to see every booth that you ever uh, dreamed of, different price points, and different manufacturers from different states. Some of them are uh, nationwide. Yeah. Some of them are actually outside of the U.S., right? He said, don't buy anything on the first day. And I was like, why? He said, a lot of the people that are going to the photo booth expo that are vendors, they're bringing inventory and they're shipping in inventory. So he said, take cash. He said, make your purchases on the very last day during the last two hours because that's when you're going to get the fattest deals because vendors don't want to take back some of that inventory or spend money shipping it back. When I heard that, I was like, I'm taking cash, Victor. (laughs) I'm taking cash. I'm going to try to negotiate some sweet deals. Uh, And so that's that's going to be my strategy. It takes me back to the swap me days. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hispanic, like, yeah, yeah, going to some. ¿Cuánto? ¿No me la dejas cinco? <laughs> no, no, pues así no puedo hacer dinero. A diez me lo ahorita. Yeah, so the swami was a crazy thing, Victor. Yeah. Uh, what are what are uh, what are some things that are standing out to you this year that didn't stand out to you last year? This year? Yeah. Um, well, this year, it's my first of, like, official slow season. Uh, January, you know, everyone's, oh, okay. everyone's making back their money from spending everything on Christmas, mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, New Year's, you know. Um, so it is more on the slower side of this month. Yeah. Um, so right now, the only thing that stood out to me is right now, I guess like this month, it's kind of like the building months mm-hmm. in a way, right? So yeah. getting ready for that peak season, getting ready for those uh, spring weddings, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this, this, this year I'm definitely focusing more on uh, just upping my SEO, um, getting into ads we talked about a little earlier. Okay. Um, yeah. Just focusing more on yeah. taking advantage of these slow seasons to really, uh, so when those fast seasons come around, just being one of the top ones. With the slow seasons, for, for me, I personally think that it's for people that are brand new, mm-hmm. the slow season is almost that season that's going to make you or break you. Because when you get started on the photo booth business, I don't know exactly when everyone has got started with their business, but what I do know is that if you get started during busy season, then you feel like, oh, I'm going to make it real big in the photo booth industry yeah, yeah. because I've been two months in and I already got one or two or three bookings. But for the people that get started with the photo booth business during slow season, it's like you won't see leads, you won't see inquiries, you won't see any bookings. Mm-hmm. 
And it's scary because if you have no experience and you've never been in the industry, you don't realize that there's actually slow seasons like you just said. Yeah, yeah. So now that I've been in business for a full two years, now I get to weather it and not and not overthink things in a negative way. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking like, oh, man, maybe I'm not just not doing a good enough job. But what I like uh, about what you just mentioned is that slow season is the perfect season for the photo booth business owner to really work on the infrastructure, work on their marketing, exactly. work on their ads, maintenance their equipment, mm-hmm. come up with a real good plan, and then tackle that plan. Because what happens is when it gets busy, bro, you know we don't have time to do almost mm-hmm. anything. Dude, it's just back-to-back events, back-to-back, driving everywhere, coming, unloading, un- uh, loading everything back up. Emails, Dude, overlays, email. text oh, messages. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot. But like December, this past December, Dude, Dude, crazy. November, December was fucking... October, November, December. Dude, right? absolutely insane, bro. Do you, tell me a little bit about your October, like your fourth quarter. Um, starting in October, it started picking up a bit. You know, Halloween events, things like that. Um, and then November... Um, November, honestly, for me, it was... It was like kind of like this. October, November, December, dude. It was just... Mm-hmm. December was insane. I, I think I had like 10 events, 12 events in December. Jeez. Dude, it was... Yeah, absolutely insane. Yeah, and those events, those inquiries and events that you got in December, you notice you got increased for January too, like for the New Year's. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you feel it where you were getting so many inquiries for New Year's Eve that you regret not raising your prices for that day? Hundred percent. So we need to start 100%. coming up with premium pricing for certain holidays. Fall, yeah, exactly. And Christmas, New Year's, yeah. and definitely top two. Did you work all holidays? <clears throat> uh christmas day like you personally yeah, yeah oh christmas day i didn't okay um christmas eve and new year's day yeah or new year's eve yeah okay and it's your full uh first year as a photo booth business full first owner. year yeah okay so victor what what do you what do you feel you should do now to grow your business i know you're doing things right now during slow season can you mm-hmm. walk us through what someone should consider doing because i don't really believe that anyone should do something specifically but i do feel like everyone has a certain way to get leads and business so we can learn from everybody Mm -hmm. and so right now as it is slow season and the slow season is usually january and then you start getting increased february march yeah right so right now in Mm -hmm. january what are you doing and what would you recommend people do so right now um one thing i've always like wanted to do is just revamp my website Right, because like we know the website. Uh, you mentioned this in one of your videos before. Your website is kind of like your money maker while you sleep, mm-hmm. right? So, people, um, some people get leads off of word of mouth, and things like that, just because of who they are as a person, you know. Okay. Um, but you're, when people don't know you, mm-hmm. and when they look at it, your, the, the, your website, is basically like your uh, your front like persona in a way. Sure. If it's messy, they're not really gonna want to book, right? But right. if it's organized fun you know there is going to be more uh more um captivating yeah captivating exactly yeah. so i feel like i want to basically i want to revamp my website get a get a professional to do it um just so those leads that come in um they transfer more over to bookings yeah so way. definitely you're working on your website you're mm-hmm. beautifying it and also making it like you said more captivating that entices the actual browser the person who's actually pro- you know considering your business to say this place looks like they know what they're doing. Exactly. They have their contact information everywhere. Let me either give them a call or because their booking process seems so uh, painless, let me just book, book right, right now. Up. Because mm-hmm. I think one of the best things, Victor, and let me know if you had this experience, is waking up in the morning, looking at your phone, and realize that someone booked. Yeah. Like without calling you, without messaging you, without nothing. emailing you. Exactly. It just says notification, booked, and it shows their first name, last name, how many hours. For me, that right there is like, that's the beautiful, it's almost like when I was doing Amazon FBA and mm-hmm. I would wake up to how many units sold and Amazon would do all, all the shipping for me. Yeah. Well, my website did all the booking for me and exactly. all the information for me. Mm-hmm. And so I, I totally agree that people should be working on their website periodically, maybe every quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, but cool, man. Thank you for sharing that part. What else are you doing, Victor? Um, just SEO right now. SEO. SEO is, I feel like the, one of the most important, if not the most important thing um, when it comes to business owners, yeah, because um, I mean, you know, what if the regular person, oh, I have a wedding coming up, I want to book a photo booth. Mm-hmm. What are they, what's the first thing they do? They go on Google, 
booth, yeah. through a photo booth near me, yes. a photo booth Orange County, 360 photo booth uh, rental, yeah. you know? And if you're one of those businesses that rank at the top with those keywords, you're, with those keywords, you're gonna do good, mm -hmm. right? You're gonna be the top ones. So I feel like that alone, it's something we should all work on basically every day. SEO, so SEO. I'll, I'll expand on that. That's actually mm -hmm. really good that you bring that up. So when we talked about the website, about making it prettier and nicer with nicer pictures, better fonts, everything aligned and just compressed where it's like, it really comes to life when you click on that, right? And mm -hmm. also the site speed, how fast you can get the page to populate on your phone and on your desktop, that, that also matters, right? Site speed. But when it comes to SEO, mm -hmm. one thing that I haven't shared with everyone just yet, but I'm doing it right now, <laughs> and that's what matters, is build a location page for your website. So when you go on your website, and, uh, and if you guys are, what I'll probably do, I, I know this is more for podcasts, but if you guys are watching this, what I'll do is I'll try to show you guys an example on the video where you have your website, Victor. Your website is going to be showing about us, contact us, gallery, mm -hmm. photo booth, pricing, and booking. And if you want to go wild, you can add a blog to it because when you add a blog to your page, now you're putting content with certain keywords and that blog alone can get your website to get more views because that blog can actually <laughs> rank on Google. Yeah. But even better than that, what I started doing, and this took me some time, but it's worth doing, build a location page on your website. So you open up a brand new page within your website, you name it locations, and within locations, you do a bunch of sub pages for locations. So if you go to my website now, you go to locations, it says Rancho Cucamonga photo booth rental, Pomona photo booth rental, San Dimas photo booth rental. And these are all sub pages. Each sub page has its own SEO with those keywords, content, and a video. Really? I did not. Exactly. I did not know. Bro, I'll, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm bringing the fire this year, right there. <laughs> so you, you get to do all that. Mm -hmm. And if you're already paying on for your website, why not make it more of an asset? So yeah. this costs nothing but time. Mm -hmm. And this is going to bring in a bunch of leads. So now, for example, just to give you an example, let's say you go on the Google search engine and you type in Calamesa photo booth rental. It'll show the header, the title of my sub page, and that takes you to my actual website. So, so even though my main page, my, yeah. my landing page, is that's not the SEO for it. I can customize the SEO per page per in the website. The su it's called a sub page. Yeah. And yeah, and I know I'm verbally, and I know you kind of grasp yeah, it because you, yeah, you yeah, mess yeah. with your website because every page on your website has its own SEO. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you can change the tag URL mm -hmm. to match that as well. So now your tag URL and your SEO and your H1 all matches, bro. So Dang, okay. imagine using that. And, and how do I know this? We have to geek out, bro. Like, like you said, <laughs> SEO is everything. Yeah. So for those listening to this right now, go on your website and do that, do that, Victor, and it's gonna help you a bunch. And one more thing to put that shit on steroids is do this. So when you have your, your location page and you have a bunch of sub pages for it, for your sub page, you can have a video that's hyperlinked to a video on YouTube. YouTube. And then you title that YouTube video the same thing to match that actual sub page. So now you have what's called a backlink from YouTube oh, okay. pointing to your <laughs> website and from your website pointing to YouTube. YouTube. Okay, yeah, okay, dude. damn, David, Back okay. In. This is free, dog. <laughs> so when you ask me, David, are you running ads? I always try to do the things that are going to help me organically and long term. First. Because ads, as, as great as they can be, yes, it's a lot of money up front. And mm. it's a lot of running a test A and test B, multiple ads at one time to see which one performs better. And then you get your winner. But by the time you get to your winner, you probably spend maybe a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. And you got to realize that it's, it's like a going to the casino and it's putting money into a gambling machine until it pays off. But once you find that winner, Victor, you can push that ad as much as, as, much as possible and you can start you know, targeting different demographics in different cities. Now, here's the thing. You shared uh, that you opened up another Google profile page, right? Yeah. All right, so tell me a little bit about that because we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Yeah, so um, basically when I first started my business, um, for me, it was just 360, right? Um, I didn't really look into the fo regular photo booths. I just, I went all in on the 360. Right. So everything from my business, my Google profile to my, um, my DBA name yeah. to uh, like you get Instagram names, everything, everything like that is it's 360. It revolves right. Yeah. Everything keywords. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm doing good in the 360 game. But when it comes to the photo booth, mm -hmm. I was not getting anything rented out because gotcha. people would come to my page and my profiles, they'd be looking for the 360, right? Yes. 
So then I talked to you a little bit about it and then you told me, hey, I would recommend doing another DBA, another Google profile, but specifically with the, basically the same thing, but with photo booth rentals, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I did. And now I'm in the process of building basically everything up again from scratch, websites, SEO, Google business profile, mm -hmm. um, Instagram pages, Facebook pages. So everything up again with, um, with the rich photo booth rental orange Those account. keywords. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. All right, so that's, that's great. And the reason I recommend you do that versus trying to make a 360 booth page all of a sudden convert for your photo booth rentals is that because it gets indexed and then it gets authority for certain keywords. So when you do the Google profile, the Google profile alone could do a lot of the heavy lifting for you mm -hmm. because the title on your Google page, like you said, photo booth rental Orange County, that right there is a beautiful long tail keyword right there, yeah. right? So if you can own it and even try to go on, uh, do, buy that domain too that matches that. Mm -hmm. I think I beat you to it though, Victor. I think I did this a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you can still get, get it and it, it could be .net, .info. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't have to be .com. Yeah. All right, so for those who don't know the difference is when you're buying a domain and let's say, for example, like the example we're using right now about the photo booth rental Orange County, if .com is already taken, so .com stands for a company and then mm -hmm. .info stands for information. information. Yeah. And so, you know, online stands for uh, online store. I'm sorry, you can do store as well mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so forth, like .org organization, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So that's, that's all it really means. Now, people think, well, .com is more powerful than .net. Not really, not anymore. Back in the day, yes, because that was like the first thing that came out was a .com. Mm -hmm. But now it's about what work and what content you put out that revolves around that keyword. But that domain definitely helps, Victor. Uh, Speaking of domains, dude, I, uh, I recently watched a video. Mm -hmm. um, I did not know this either, that oh. you can buy multiple domains yeah. and tie it all back to your main page. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I did not know that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad. Uh, and, and just really quick for no one, for anyone that hasn't met Victor, one thing that I admire about Victor is he, he booked meetings with me, like one-on-ones. Like he paid, we sat down on Zoom, and he, he did this twice. Mm -hmm. And you are the type of person, bro, that actually applied the things that we covered, and you got results. And the reason I bring you on the show is because you're, the, you're a good example of you do the work, you do the research, and then you apply what you learned. So you be, and then you get the res results, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you get the results, and then it builds confidence. And then you go back into the drawing board, into the lab, and you do some more research. And you keep doing it over and over again to a point where a year later, people look at you as like an expert, and you don't feel like an expert because you were just doing the work yeah, yeah. and applying it. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and I always, and this happens to me all the time, I lose train of thought. So the, uh, when you buy a domain, when you buy that domain, you can have multiple domains point to your ultimate uh, website. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did not know that, bro. I, I'm definitely, I found that out, I watched one of your videos this morning yeah. on the way over here. Yeah. Dude, and that's when I found that out, I was like, bro, what? Yeah. If I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna purchase, <laughs> yeah. purchase some domains. Yeah. Purchase some domains, bro. The reason I went to purchase some domains is because I do have plans for the business mm -hmm. and I want to beat everyone to the domain. So one thing that I did is photo booth rental is taken. That thing's been around for ages and ages and, and ages. If it, it's taken, right? Yeah. Not, not even .net is available. Mm -hmm. That was taken too. So what do I do given the circumstances and the evolution that we're going through? I bought a domain called photoboothrentalai.com. Mm -hmm. Because AI, we already know is here to stay. Yeah, it's trending right too. Yeah. So always think of Think futuristically and think what's also, you know, relevant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do that. Buy some domains. When you buy those domains, Victor, make sure that you're including them in all this everywhere you're posting that allows you to put in those domains because that's how those domains are going to start getting indexed and they're going to get associated with your main website. So okay. thanks for reminding me about that. So for SEO, because we're still in the SEO uh, segmentation right now, is when you start your your photo booth business. Uh, just like Victor said is, don't be fixated on only one service, one product. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be offering multiple things, make sure your website really complements your services. So in this case, Victor, if we knew this would happen, because I'm in the same boat as you were, right? Where yeah. we started with the 360, bit, uh, 360 booth and we went hard. Yeah. And that's all what's on our mind, yeah, exactly. right? I got to, th two, I got to three, 360 booths, I think, before I even bought my first photo booth. Okay, okay. Because, you know, we got started yeah, when yeah. that thing was just popping. So, but now, like I said, my website alone too, it does really well for 360 photo booth rental, mm -hmm. but not so hot 
for the photo booth yeah, console. Yeah. Same thing with my Google profile, which is a, I opened up another Google profile. But here's another thing. So on top of you building a locations page within your website without paying extra money mm -hmm. and getting more traffic to your website, and on top of buying domains that have keywords that also complement your website, what you can also do is you can actually buy a second page, uh, build a second website for only $16 a month on, on, um, on Wix. Wix. Really? Yeah. yeah. So what you can do now is because mm -hmm. you own both of those websites, mm -hmm. you can have one website cross-referencing, the uh, like doing like cross-sales. Oh, okay. So for example, say you're paying for your website right now and you're paying for the business pro because you have booking in there, you have a point of sale, mm -hmm. you're able to do money transactions and, th and that you're paying premium, right? But if you pay an extra $16, now what you can do is you can build a brand new website design with heavy SEO for the photo booth rental and your location, mm -hmm. have multiple pages and then have links going back to your website and back and forth. But the most important part here is that for $16, when you build that beautiful website with some new photos, new content, because a lot of people struggle building a website because they have no content. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't have any content, if you guys visit my web website, you'll see that I have photo booth content. I think you bought some of it in the past. Yeah. And you also got lucky and got like promos, like when I put out promos. Yeah, like, when you first put out promos, yeah, yeah. free, yeah. Yeah, so that could be purchased on my website, uh, canarycapitalrentals.com. And so getting back to the topic is, so you pay $16 for this website page, Victor. Mm -hmm. And then when, say for example, people want to book with you, you can make that booking button a hyperlink so that they can check out on your main page so you don't have to pay a premium to, Got it. Oh, for, for, okay, the, okay. for the transactions that our premium page would have. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, you, you gotcha. get what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. That yeah. everything, I feel like that would make everything so much easier also because instead of going back and forth on like yeah. their total amounts, you just yeah. have everything on one website. Exactly, dude. Yeah. yeah so okay. that just points them and takes them to that calendar on your main page and then they'll just check out on your main page. Got it. But okay. they got, but your other website got that traffic. Yeah. yeah. Got that, the, the search in. So it'll record it as data. Like people actually visiting that website. Mm -hmm. Damn. Okay. Yeah, okay. Dude, so we're going hard. Huh? Don't <laughs> even worry about that, Victor. So, uh, but uh, for everyone that's listening right now, Victor and, and, and uh, Drew also from, uh, from YouTube, he, he made a video and he said, uh, don't watch my videos because a lot of people just consume and they do research, but they never step outside of their door and become a practitioner and put everything they learn into practice. Mm -hmm. You are the total opposite, Victor. And this is why we're here having this conversation is because you take action. And sometimes you take op action off of optimism and, and you're enthusiastic and the results will vary, right? Because it depends <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on your level of one, how you really execute it to the T. Mm -hmm. And that's the key word right here right now. Talking about SEO, the key word of the conversation is yeah, execution. Yeah, exactly. You can learn as much as possible. You can read as many books and listen to podcasts. But if you don't execute, then nothing's gonna happen. you have to have the willpower to execute. Man. Mm -hmm. So this is another reason why I started fasting and changing up my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because quite honestly, you do get to a point in your business where you become a little complacent and money's coming in and you feel like, well, I'll, I want to take my life back and I want to just, you know, like uh, stay neutral, right? And just kind of coast and autopilot. But quite honestly, Victor, it's, I'm way too young for that. And there's way too many people I feel like are relying for <clears throat> David to come up with like, okay, David, what else should I do now? <laughs> and so yeah. here, here we are, man, like innovating and I'm trying to share as much as I can with you mm -hmm. because I know that you are going to take today's information and apply within 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you best believe I'm going to buy some domain, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Add a so, location page. Yeah. So I use Wix. You use Wix as well, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people like Wix. A lot of people would uh, rather go with other websites. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to speak about other websites. But the reason I like Wix, like I said, is because when, when uh, everything I'm sharing with you, I learn from their actual representatives Oh, God, so yeah, when yeah. I because ex when you go to help and you give them the phone number and they'll call you within three to thirty minutes, mm -hmm. what I love about it is you get an expert on the phone, and what I do is I get to talk to them for free, in a way for free. Yeah, so yeah. I'll pick the brain. I tell them, look, this is what I'm trying to do. How could I do this the most cost effective way? So then they tell me, well, you can get this plan and you get two gigs of memory, so on and so forth. My point I'm trying to make is that I like Wix and I like Snapic as well because of the overall customer support. Mm -hmm. And that, as a businessman, I appreciate great customer support. Yeah. 
Yeah, Snapchat has some great customer service, dude. I've been in a pickle a couple times at events, bro. Yeah. I text them real quick, dude, and they reply probably two minutes, a minute, dude. Snapping. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. I like Snapping too because not only that, but have you noticed that uh, 24 hours uh, later, you'll get something in your inbox and it's then checking up on you? Yeah, yeah, Hey, yeah, Victor, it's... is there anything else I can help you with? Is this? I'm like, what? And I was like, no, I'm good, thank you. And then a week later, hey, just wanted to touch base, making sure everything was like, damn, Snapping. Yeah, dude. So what I did with Snapping is I reached out to some of the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the main folks over at Snapic and I, because I love their systems in play, I love their automations, I love all of that. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see if I can book a one-on-one with them so that I can kind of take some of those systems they have in place and put them in my business. Because I'm sure that some of that might be uh, AI mixed with maybe like, some, like a role responder, mm-hmm. but dude, just to have those automations, those emails going out and all that stuff, that builds your brand. Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. you guys are listening to this section of the podcast, if you guys have a photo booth or a 360 booth, I recommend Snapic. I'll use my link. Uh, I have an affiliate link, Victor. Mm-hmm. So that link will save you 10% off on your weekly subscription, monthly, or annual subscription. Uh, which version are you using right now? You're going all out, right? You're going with the, the 169. I think it's the, the Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that one. It's not the, and you know this, Victor, like you shopped around. Snapic is not the cheapest when mm-hmm. it comes to the software. But it is, dude, it's definitely worth it. But it's, honestly, it's worth it. Yeah, honestly, like if you guys haven't tried it, honestly, there's a seven day free trial, right? Mm-hmm. Seven days. Just give it a try. Yeah. Honestly, give it a try. Highly recommend that. Mm-hmm. And they continue to innovate. Right now, there's something in beta. I don't know if you noticed, but it'll take a photo of you and then they'll do the, the AI where it makes you look like either like a superstar yeah, or like a, a character and stuff like that. Different characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's entertaining. I don't think it'll stick around for a long time, but right now, given the trend, it's about keeping with the trend and then keep providing the consumer with what they want. Mm-hmm. And they want what's hot. They want what's trending so that they can post on social media. Yeah, yeah. I feel like those, those type of things, more like certain niches for like certain certain events, I guess like if you got booked for like a comic, a comic thing or something like that, yeah, there you go. a Disney thing, I guess that'd be, that could be cool. But yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's, it's more, uh, more niche. So, so social media, Victor, because I, I just, my, my bulb just lit up. It was a little dim right now. It just mm-hmm. lit up. Like, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to get this uh, <laughs> screwed in correctly. So, social media, right? And we're still on the SEO topic, even though we, we digress a little bit on the software side. But with SEO, another thing that I shared with you that I didn't really share with anyone else is when it comes to SEO, another thing you can do that's absolutely free is when you post on Instagram and it tells you, it asks for the location. Always use the location of the people that you want to target. So Mm -hmm. all the videos that I post on Instagram, I never post San Bernardino for all my videos. I never do Ranch Cucamo for all my videos. I use a location of the location that I want to target as far as SEO goes. Because when you go and you select the location, what the algorithm does, what Instagram does, it'll push that video out to people that reside in that location. Mm -hmm. So you do that on Instagram and on top of that, you add 25 hashtags that are relevant to your post and location you're trying to target. And this is now how I'm able to go on Google, type in certain keywords, and my Instagram pops up now. Another thing that's okay. absolutely for free, Victor. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely free, ladies and gentlemen. Check that out. Uh, cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers to you, Victor. <laughs> cheers, man. Good shit, bro. So SEO, and mm-hmm. I think you mentioned something earlier about running ads, right? Yeah. I think running ads is essential. And in the very beginning, I was just, because I knew a little bit about SEO and I got like a Google certificate. Mm-hmm. So I, I knew more or less what long tail keywords and, and things like that. Uh, I said, I want to just rank organically. But now what's happening is you can only do so much with your website and you can only do so much with your Google profile. So what I want to do with ads is I want those ads to show up where people can actually afford my services. Mm, because yeah. what's happening, Victor, and a lot of people will, will come across this issue because I see it in the Facebook community. Mm-hmm. Facebook community, uh, if you guys are listening, is 360 Booth Global Family. Yeah. All right, join that group. There's over 8,000 members right now. Some people that have been in the, the group are like newbies, right? And some people have been there longer than I have in the game. Mm-hmm. So uh, back to what I was saying is if you, and this is, I think this is a story, I think I might have heard from Alex from Morsi. I, th- I think it might, uh, I think I heard it from him. He said that uh, there's a guy that was stuck on the freeway and there was another guy that stopped by to help him and he got him to, uh, he, he gave him a lift to his house so he helped him out. The guy that he helped out was a multimillionaire. So the multimillionaire uh, later on as a, as a thank you, 
he paid off the other guy's mortgage. Okay. The guy that helped him. Yeah. The guy didn't know who he was helping though. And, and in reality, that can happen. I can see it happening. I, you see that stuff every now and then. But so if that guy would have helped someone else, he could have got a simple thank you from someone else. Maybe 20 maybe $40 for their cash, uh, for their gas. For the right? gas, yeah. But for us, Victor, the way I was able to take that and, and apply it to the business is we're here to help people. We're here to help people with their event, execute an event that's full of fun, right? Mm-hmm. And those people that we help, we get to pick and choose who we want to help. And their gratitude and their thanks is going to be different in comparison to any other individual. So when I have a specific avatar in mind, that person that I want them to book with me will not bring up discounts, promos at all, will not haggle me on the price, Yeah. will be professional, mm-hmm. they'll have a team that's punctual, emails, right? That's the avatar that I want. That's the avatar that's going to give me their repeat, repeat business. And that's the kind of client that also will take their time to go on Google and mm-hmm. give you. Yeah. So once you tar- mm-hmm. start targeting that person, you help them, they help you back. And it's a beautiful reciprocation. And it's a long term relationship mm-hmm. versus the people that hit you up last minute and try to lowball yeah. you on top of that. <laughs> yeah. And then you tell them like, listen, it, everything is due up front because we usually collect. Uh, the payment se- seven to ten, yeah. seven to ten businesses before the event date, and then they're saying, "Well, can I pay you when you get here?" Look at how much shit we went through already with someone that they already booked late. Mm-hmm. So why would you want to cater to that client? You don't, you don't need the headache. Yeah, gotcha. You want those clients, like I said, that are going to be more than happy to pay you what you're worth as far as your experience and your expertise go. Mm-hmm. So for people watching this video, guys, I want you to come into the industry not because you need to make money to pay your rent. Not because you want to supplement your uh, monthly income and are desperate just to make an extra few to a couple thousand dollars. But I want you to come to the industry with the master plan so that when opportunities come up and they're not aligned with their mission, you're not in a position where you feel so, uh, you know, there's scarcity for money that you make these decisions based off of pressure and you take on events that are not aligned with your overall mission. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, Victor, what they'll do is they'll come into the industry and they just want to make the money back they spent on the photo booth. So they'll take on anything and cater to anyone. Yeah. And so right there, how do you so how do you set yourself apart when you are cutting the industry down by offering dirt cheap prices? Yeah. So <clears throat> the reason I say come into the industry without needing the money is because it'll give you leverage and it'll put you in a position of power where you can say, No, we're fully booked. You can't you don't want that client mm-hmm. or you can redirect that client to someone else and get a finder's fee, make a finder's fee if you want. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Victor, I don't know. Some maybe maybe this year you'll experience where you're in a, in a position where you can either take on the event or tell yourself, I'd rather not. So that, that's something I really want people to think and, and think about it and remove their remove some of the instant gratification. Like, dude, I made a quick five hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, because. It's all long term because if you do, if you're doing events like every weekend, right? Every other day for 200 bucks, 300 bucks for two hours, right. you're going to get burned out, dude. You're going to get burned you're out. You're going to get burned out. Yeah. And those clients that you, that, that you're catering to, you're most likely not going to get too many referrals. And if you get the referrals, they're going to be referrals that are only willing to pay around the same amount. Exactly. Yeah. For. Yeah. Talk about that one experience where um, I gave you one of the leads and then that lead became uh, one of your long-term clients and they did repeat business for you. Yeah, yeah. So um, we mentioned in the last podcast as well. Yeah. My very first event, yeah. um, before I even had like a Google business profile and everything like that, um, I, f- I followed you like from the beginning, right? Yeah. And then on your Instagram story, it was one of the first few events that you, you gave out. Mm-hmm. Um, you posted on your story, hey, I need, a, I need this event for Halloween or the 28th or something like that. Okay. Um, and I hit you up. I was like, hey, I'm new to the game. My name is Victor. I introduced myself and stuff like that. And then you're like, oh, give me your email, give me your phone number. I'll send the, I'll send, I'll give you the information to the client. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then so the client gave me a call. We talked, she booked, right? Um, I will say that one, I did price a little under, a little more you under. Did? Yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but tell people why. Like, tell me exactly why, Victor. Why did you price a little under? It was my very first event. Dude. There you go. My very first one. Okay, so this is aligned with what we're just having a conversation about. It's like when you're first in the game, you're so excited. You're almost willing to do it almost, almost for free. For free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I, ch- I charged her uh, 400 okay. for two hours. Okay. Yeah. So very first. And it, I didn't offer nothing. I didn't offer no, like, uh, no party lights, no, um, no fog machine, 
you know, cold sparkles, like nothing like that, which is bare bones, right? Okay. So, um, yeah, and then so I did her event. Uh, she liked it. She had a good time, obviously, right? Her, uh, her guest, they all, they all had a fun time. And then I got a call back from her, I want to say a couple months after. Like, hey, I have a, at my birthday, my cousin's birthday coming up. We want to book you again, uh, right? And I was like, oh, okay, for sure. So I did that event, and then she called me back again after that. And dude, yeah. And so right now, I've, I've done three events for her. Yeah. Um, hopefully, again, this three year. Three events? Yeah, yeah from one, one year. Yeah, yeah, three events in one year. That's super solid, so. bro. That's super solid. Hey, so mm-hmm. when it comes to the marketing and the SEO and all the ads, there's one thing that trumps all of that. Repeat clients. Repeat clients, dude. Yeah. Repeat clients. Keep those clients, man. So I, I think that a lot of people want to get more and more clients, but we should focus on our existing clients. Mm-hmm. So here's another thing that I want to share with you guys that's absolutely free. And I know Victor within 24 to 48 hours, he's going to go do it. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. So in business, you want to create urgency and scarcity. Mm-hmm. And people feel it when they're trying to book last minute and no photo booth operator is around. Available. So now they're willing to pay well, they would not pay if it was if there were too many people offering the service, supply mm-hmm. and demand, right? Service. Yeah, exactly. So what you can do now, Victor, and this this I think trumps ads, like beats ads. Mm-hmm. So all the people that book with you, you have their email, you have their information. So you start building an email list of all of your past clients, and so then you take that email list and you inject it uh, into your template. Well, not exactly template, but you wanna you you wanna categorize it for repeat clients and then what you start doing is every single month or you can do it every single week just depending on what you want to do is you send a newsletter or you send an email to all of your clients the first email should thank them you know for for their past booking Mm -hmm. and then you tell them hey guys just wanted to share our occupancy right now in the month of march we only have availability for two more slots and then from that point on you update them every single month. So one, you stay within their radar, and two, you let them know that there is only so many spots available. Mm-hmm. So that's scarcity. Yeah. So what I love about that concept is they get this information up front because they're your repeat client. And so you want to give them the priority of booking versus a brand new client. Mm-hmm. So now they feel like, oh, this, this company is not only looking out for us, but they're updating us with their availability so that we don't come to across a point where we're like crazy looking for a photo book. Yeah, I feel like they also kind of feel like we're their guy, you know? Like they're, they're my company, you know? Yeah. So I feel like when you, when you create that bond with them especially, mm-hmm. they're more than happy to refer you mm-hmm. to, other, to other friends and family, you know, compared to just someone new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like And that's... if you really want to uh, add a little bit more of an incentive, I, w- I, w- I would say hold off on this part, but you can always say if you guys know anyone uh, that would like to book and let them know about these dates, then we will be more than happy to give you a $50 referral. It's a credit for your next photo booth. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to do that, and, and I don't recommend doing that right away, because remember, all we're doing is staying within their radar, creating urgency, and letting them know that there's scarcity. Mm-hmm. So they don't want to miss out. Yeah. Especially, say, so, say for example, in January, you, you would have started this, these running, and these aren't even campaigns, Victor. You're not, you're not spending money. Yeah, it's just this is just an free. email with like a template mm-hmm. that looks like a campaign, but because they're your clients, you're sending it out to, you're sending it out to them through uh, Wix, mm-hmm. right? It's called email, uh, email marketing. What, what, what's cool about this is that when they receive your email, you can word it however you want, add whatever things you want. And within that email, it could be... Uh, Forever Friends February uh, photo booth. And you can always have a jingle to it. Mm-hmm. And if you set it up to make it weekly, you can give them an update like, okay, we're, we're, we have two slots available. Or you can use percentages. We are 85% booked. So you and I both know as photo booth business owners, even though we're, say for example, 50% booked, to them, they don't know how fast those, those slots are filling out, mm-hmm. are being filled. But for us, we know that if... Worst case scenario, we can always hire someone else to fulfill bookings, yeah, yeah, even though exactly. our calendar show is full. Mm-hmm. But for the client, they know that it, it would be better to book with us directly before time is too, the time is too late. Yeah. And this also, Victor, allows the people like corporations and businesses to book with you months and months and months in advance. Mm-hmm. And this is what's been happening lately. Like for me, when I send out those emails, uh, I already started getting for March, May, June, for June. Mm-hmm. And so what helps me is I'm able to get those bigger clients, and I, I made a video about this. I'm able to get those bigger clients that plan ahead and already have their budget. 
to book way ahead. And so for me, that's a comforting place to be at yeah. because it's like our calendars are getting booked far out. Mm -hmm. And so that just, just uh, wanted to touch base on that part as well because it kind of ties in a little bit into the marketing SEO aspect. Mm -hmm. But like I said, um, you can take advantage of those same clients and see the true value on your repeat clients. Got it, got it. Okay, yeah. And like you said, you already made an impression. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. They know Victor. They know the team. They know the production. Mm -hmm. Get them. <laughs> so I had a, a, a talk with uh, someone that I, I truly admire. I had a talk with a gentleman named Thomas. Thomas is the owner of Photo uh, Stay Golden Photo mm -hmm. Booth. And he is one of the few photo booth businesses that has a Google with over 200 uh, five-star Google reviews. Dang, yeah. 200? Yeah, so, so I learned a lot from him within like one quick sit down because he's been in the game for like more than seven years. Okay. So there's a lot to soak up from him. And yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's around my age. But one thing that really stood out mm -hmm. from, from Thomas is he has like over 15 photo booth attendants. That is freaking 15. crazy, yeah. bro. So a lot of us are coming into the industry and some of us are getting traction quickly because we even have people that can, like we, we're friends with wedding planners and DJs and venue owners. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes some of us come into the game and we have leverage, we have an edge on the competition because of those, it's, it's, it goes back to it's about who you know. Yeah. So when I was talking to, to Thomas, I was thinking like, one of the things that I struggled with, Victor, was finding talent, finding people that will stick around. Mm -hmm. And so I picked his brain a little bit, right? And I learned two things. So one, use Indeed. And then when, oh, you're, okay. yeah, and when, you're, and when you're using Indeed, make sure your description and your summary have special bullet points. Like for me, example, it would be must live within 10 miles from San Bernardino. The reason why you want to put that is because you want efficiency. And by the end of the event, you want them to deliver your equipment back to you, not two days later or three days later, mm -hmm. but everything is just way more optimized. So you get people that are close by that will make it to the event and to the warehouse or to your location and pick up the photo booth on time. Mm -hmm. So you'll enter bullet points like that too. And then to filter some of the people out, you can put as far as the pay rate goes, you can put 20 to $22 an hour. Because remember, they're using your equipment, right? Yeah. And they're going out there. And what I realized, Victor, is, and, and this is, and I'm always going to be very open as far as like when I fuck up or I feel like I haven't been doing the best job. And once I learn, it's like, okay, I need to like pivot. I need to really switch this up. I was overpaying my assistants. Oh, okay. I was overpaying mm -hmm. them. I was paying them like $35 an hour. And so the reason I was doing that is because in my mind, I thought, well, why don't we just pay them a good amount of money so that we don't lose them? Mm -hmm. But see, the reason I made that decision and I don't want to have a high turnover was because the amount of work and, and that goes into the training. Yeah. And that's an investment of my time. But what I realized is if you can use a, a platform that gets a lot more candidates in, mm -hmm. then you as a photo booth business owner, you get to pick and choose who you're going to interview, Right. And once you find these candidates, right, and I think that the sweet spot is between 18 to 25 years old because that's when they're full of charisma and energy. Yeah, yeah. And they're still sponges to a point where you can motivate them mm -hmm. or you can influence them in a very positive way. And 18 to 25, because by then they're probably going to get ready to graduate from college too. And then they're going to be an engineer, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever they're going to be, which is uh, more power to them. Mm -hmm. So use like platforms like Indeed or uh, Facebook groups now hiring. And then... Also, what I learned is you can expand a photo booth business much faster using a standard photo booth. Because my thing is like a lot of people that I was considering making an actual employee didn't have a van, didn't have a truck, didn't have a big SUV. They either had a coupe or a little sedan. Mm -hmm. And the 360 booth, you can't fit, you know, like your car is an exception because you have a hatchback, a hatchback yeah. right? But how many people do you know have hatchbacks? Like, quite honestly, Victor, you're the only guy I know has a hatchback. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's a dope car, but there's not a, hatchbacks. Um, there's only certain sexy models. Like mm -hmm. the, the, your model you has, it's an yeah. attractive model. Because, ah, sorry, I, my, I was, I, you get to an age where you're squishing, like you ever accidentally squish one of your testicles? <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet, bro. <laughs> oh man, that just happened right now. We'll cut that part out, maybe. Uh, so just continue keeping it uh, right here is when you're hiring, 
and you want to scale your business, mm -hmm. one, you want to make sure that you're still keeping enough profit to keep the business operating and scaling, mm -hmm. not just getting by or staying afloat. You'll, you won't, you won't win. Yeah. Two is that if you start pushing out the photo booth concept more than the 360 booth concept, you'll know that there is a lot more, a, 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 there's more of an ability there, a capacity to get more people because everyone drives a standard car. Mm -hmm. And you know what I learned, Victor, you can take the backdrop, you can take the entire photo booth and one box of props and fit it all in one car. And, and, and so this gives us photo booth business owners uh, leverage because now we don't have to look for a specific individual yeah. who drives a certain type of car and they have access to that car Friday, Saturdays or Sundays or during the week. Now we can reach out to an individual who just has a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, another thing, Victor, is and here I was I was uh, it, it was right on the tip of my tongue, but uh, it'll it'll come back to me. It was uh, regarding the employment. Okay, so you have a pay rate for these people that you bring on, right? These photo booth attendants. Mm -hmm. When you are talking to them and interviewing them, you can swing up deals. You can offer them bonuses and rewards. One thing you can do is you guys get to keep all the tips. Mm -hmm. They keep all the tips. You don't even, it's cash. So yeah. we don't worry about it. We're good. And so you and I both know that some people tip hundreds of dollars when it comes to tips, bro. Yeah. You know, so one guy told me he he um, one of the guys on Instagram said he he got like a six hundred dollar tip. I like mine was four hundred. I Damn. thought mine was a lot. You know, six hundred six hundred bucks. Yeah. Tip? So if I got tips oh, in the hundreds that that frequently, I would probably bump up my photo booth prices. <laughs> but no, but it's, it's all good. So another thing, if people are considering scaling, and, and you and I are in, in that phase right now, mm -hmm. is that when they use their own car, my question was, well, if they're working for us. And, and they get in a car accident, are we liable because they were on the hour because we're paying them to get to a certain location, we're paying for the, for the travel time? Mm -hmm. So now I learned that they have their own car insurance and they're 1099, they're contractors. So they're, they're liable for their own car. Now Got as far it. as okay. our equipment inside of their car, we have uh, our company insurance yeah, to cover insurance. the equipment. Yeah. And that's one thing that I wasn't too sure of. So now, Victor, knowing this information, bro, get ready, bro, because we're going to fucking explode. Yeah. We got to okay. get at least like five in-house employees that are coming up and picking up the booths good to go. Like, boom, boom, boom. The 360 booth, if, if, if you're watching this for the first time and you're in the sideline and thinking of buying a 360 booth, back then, Victor, I would tell people get the 40 inch because it's a perfect size mm -hmm. and you can fit up to four to five adults. I like, I like putting four adults on there because I don't like people butting each other and then yeah, yeah, yeah. stepping on the arms. Their toes sticking out and then just smacks the arm. Toe. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's your> <laughs> and so now what I've been through, I think getting the, the smaller, the, the one size smaller. The 80, 80 centimeter? The 80 centimeter. <clears throat> I would mm -hmm. probably do that. And the reason why not, Victor, is because now I'm thinking of scaling the business. So the 80 centimeter is the type of booth you can actually fit in a sedan in the trunk. Mm -hmm. and Way you, lighter. And you don't need to take a backdrop. So you have enough space. And it's lighter, like you said. Mm -hmm. Maybe like 15 pounds lighter. And so if, if you are looking to add a booth to your business maybe go with like the smaller, more compact size. Cause I, I, I feel like it has so many more benefits than going larger and being limitation on the, on the transportation part. You posted a couple months ago that you bought a DSLR booth. Mm -hmm. um, how's that going for you? Like so the what DSLR, are the process right now? Yeah, DSLR booth that I bought, as beautiful it is and as, as attractive as it is, it, it works off the Surface Pro. And, okay. as, and as I mentioned earlier, I use Snappic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it doesn't work with Snappic. And I wanna continue using Snappic because I love how you can airdrop things like that. Yeah. And so I don't really use that specific DSLR booth. So right now I'm actually in the market to buy a DSLR booth. And this is a great topic you bring up, Victor, because I think that slowly but surely people are just going to start pivoting towards DSLR photo booths. The reason why is because you want to stand out from the competition and also bring the quality. Mm -hmm. You can't bring compare your pictures. Yeah. Yes. So if you're going to start targeting weddings, you definitely want to bring a DSLR camera. 100%. Yeah. And so Snappic works really well with iOS, which is the iPad. Mm -hmm. So how cool would it be if we're at weddings at photo booth providers and we're able to text, message, email, a QR code, and airdrop. I want to say 90% of the people use, maybe I'm a little off, but I want to say at least 
eight out of 10, nine out of 10 people use iPhones. Mm -hmm. And so to airdrop it, super nice. If they want to pay for the physical prints, they can airdrop it, put it on social media, 24 megapixel photo. Yeah, And they then do the print out on the photo too as well. That's a freaking yeah. bundle. Because even the file, the file on social media, it's nice, dude, because the quality on the, on the Canon R7, yeah. dude, it's crispy, bro. Yeah. Crispy. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. and for people that are using the iPad booth, there's always going to be a market for them. Mm -hmm. But if you want to start making minimum $700 per event, then that's when you have to bring out the DSLR booth. Yeah. And what you can do within the description is educate the consumer saying, okay, this is, this consists of the shell, um, you know, $1,400 iPad, $1,000, uh, Canon camera, R7, mm -hmm. $1,400 camera mm -hmm. lens. So now they're seeing all of the value they're getting for a fraction of the plus, price. For a fraction of price, plus the service behind it mm -hmm. and the photo booth attendant and the props and the overall experience. So to them, it's not like they're realizing, wow, this is how much value we're getting and this is the only how much we're paying and we don't have to be stuck with all that equipment and everything. Mm -hmm. We get to enjoy the service at yeah. a fraction of the price. So that's what you do is you educate them on the value you're bringing. And so with the DSLR, another thing, Victor, is, and you know this too, when you bring your iPad booth mm -hmm. to the outdoor event, it's shitty, bro. Dude, because the sunlight, huh? The sunlight. Yeah, dude. But with, when you bring a DSLR camera to an outdoor event, dude, if you have minimum 300 watts as far as flash power goes, no matter where, you're, where you turn, how you turn it, you can offset it to where the people come out beautiful because of the flash. And a lot of people don't think of that, but because I'm getting more into the photography world, mm -hmm. I realize you can take some gorgeous photos with the DSLR outside during photo booth events if you have a DSLR photo booth. And so I, I do think that it's gonna start, there's gonna be a, a pivot where people are gonna gear more towards DSLR photo booths. And my ideal photo booth would be one that's light, made out of aluminum, mm -hmm. uh, one that tilts up and down, right? one that uh, we were able to put the camera inside very, very easily along with operating off of an iPad. Mm -hmm. So if we can have all that and not just that, but have the power going to the iPad at 60 watts using a type C, mm -hmm. the iPad won't drop a bit because there's so much power going to the iPad. Yeah. So the older, I don't know if you notice this, but the older iPad booths, they're not type C. Yeah. yeah, so they get less wattage, mm -hmm. and throughout the event, we have your iPad on the brightness, on the highest brightness level, plus the processor's working 24-7. Yeah. The battery will drop slowly, but you never run out of battery, but that's just one thing I wanted to note. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that is the, the light of the actual iPad booth. Those we measure in lumens, depending on how bright it is. Mm -hmm. The higher the lumens, then you'll notice that it's much brighter. But my point I'm trying to make is, you have to really geek out before you buy a photo booth. Don't look for the cheapest price. My oh, yeah. thing when I first got started, Victor, was all about finding the cheapest price. Mm -hmm. But look at what happens is people buy very, very cheap. They're, why are you looking for the cheapest price? Why are you not looking for the best value? And, and, and I'm pivoting, man. I'm, I'm changing my shit up too. So now when I find something that says, man, that's expensive. No, Dave, it's not expensive. It's just you're broke. <laughs> and let's just be real yeah, with yeah. one another, right? Yeah, yeah. Because if it's priced like that, it's priced like that for a reason. Mm -hmm. So now when I, I make a purchase, I look for value. So I encourage everyone that's in the game that's ready to buy a photo booth, mm -hmm. look for value. How does that look like? Okay, well, the warranty, that should be across the board the same. Minimum one year. Mm -hmm. Two, after sell support. Once you buy it, how often can you reach technical support or customer service? Are they via just email, messages, right? After that is, what do I get as far as an onboarding bundle package goes? Because keep in mind, I'm buying a photo booth from you guys, but what else am I going to need? Okay, I'm going to need photo booth content. I'm going to need, I'm going to need contracts. I'm going to need overlays. I'm going to, all that, right? Yeah. So if you can find someone that can provide you with all of that, and it's what, what I consider a turnkey package, mm -hmm. it's like you bought it. You're ready, ready to go to the event on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. So I, I want people to really slow down and not procrastinate too much, but start calculating things a little differently, Victor. No, I, I agree with you, though, when, it, when, um, when you said people are going to start turning more towards regular photo booths mm -hmm. and DSLR booths. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, me, I, with my first event, um, the, tw the 13th, it was a DSLR and um, 360. Mm -hmm. It was a bundle, a bundle event. Dude, the DSLR booth is just way easier way less hassle dude it's just um i don't know for me 
I enjoy it a tiny bit more than the 360 yeah. just because of how easy it is, you know? Yeah. And honestly, the pricing, um, pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. Like, not, maybe the 360 you can charge a little bit more mm-hmm. just because it's trendy premium service right now. Yeah. But in the long run, I mean, and regular photo booths are way more popular. You get me? So yeah. I feel like it's a bigger market as well. Photo booths are, mm-hmm. as I say, they're here to stay. Yeah. They've been around for mm-hmm. ages. The only thing that's changing really is the shell of the booth mm-hmm. and the quality of the photos. Yeah. And, and but, but people love, like, I say this, people love reminiscing instantly. Mm-hmm. So they take a photo, you know, 30 seconds later, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, remember, when, remember when we took this picture? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like 30 seconds. Yeah, where, yeah. where does the time go? Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. What do you think of them chips, Victor? They're good, man. I like, uh, I, can't, I can't believe these are mango. You said mango chili? Yeah, that's mango with chili lime. They're good, though. Yeah. I like those. And then these um, kind of like spicy ones. Mm-hmm. These are good too. Yeah. Hey, Victor, so r- right now with, with uh, your, your, um, your level of experience, do you feel like anyone that's getting ready to, to jump into the photo booth with all the information plus what's relevant right now, what would you tell them? Like give them some advice and, and, and really like think about like if there was your little brother or little sister starting a photo booth business, mm-hmm. give, them, g- give them like give them these steps of what they should consider before making their purchase and even considering coming into the industry. Take it away. Okay. So first, before you, before you even consider getting into the industry, you have to first ask yourself, are you a people's person, right? Oh. Are, you, are you someone who's, you know, who in, even enjoys being around a party environment, you know, talking with random strangers, holding a conversation? Because if you really want to succeed, Honestly, it comes down to people's skills as well, right? Mm-hmm. You go out there. In the beginning, you're going to go out there yourself, right? And now we're going to, the odds of you having someone hired already in the beginning stages, it's kind of low, right? Mm-hmm. So it's going to be you going out there yourself. And then when you're waiting for that video to load or that picture to load in, or that picture to print, right? Mm-hmm. It's a couple seconds. Mm-hmm. You don't want it to be awkward silence, right? right. You, want to, you want to make conversation like, hey, how are you guys enjoying the event? You guys having a good time? Hey, what's the last hey. time you showered? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, how do you know the how do you know the bride and groom or oh, yeah. what, what side of the family are you? No, sure. You just have to make you just have to make conversation, show everyone a good time. People's person. Exactly, because then also you get the reviews, mm. right? So if you first of all, you have to know, are you a people's person? Even if you're not right now, can you do that? Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. if not, then the odds of you going out there and then just sure, very dry, not gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work, right? So once you do that, you you understand your people's person. You want to get into it, mm-hmm. research what type of photo booth you want, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's a 360, if you want to go to the iPad route, just drop offs, more on the passive side. If you want to um, premium, charge premium services for the DSLR booth, um, obviously research which one you want to get into. Mm-hmm. And then in the beginning, just focus on that one, okay. I would say. Yeah. So first of all, those are three steps. And then if you want to get more, more really into the, the, meat, the meat and potatoes, Google profile, SEO, I feel like those are going to be your best friends. Mm-hmm. Best friends in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And then once you do that, then you can start going into ads and you can start into going into uh, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, things like that. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. when I would say, just to add to all of that is also envisioning yourself in the business a year in and mm-hmm. see if you want to be owner operated where you're just the operator and you're the owner or if you want to start the business and have other people run your business why you actually own the business because a lot of people come into the industry to make more money and they mm-hmm. think oh if it's a low cost of entry to get started then I can make money much faster and then they'll, they'll make the mistake and like you said um, you you can get burned out if, if you continue doing four events a month for a mm-hmm. year you lose your enthusiasm yeah. you you start off as a people's person now you hate humans <laughs> you, yo yeah, it, yeah. it's crazy it happens, it it happens. happens. and so th- what you're putting down is absolutely true Mm-hmm. So if you guys are barely going to get started, uh, think about how soon are you guys going to be hiring someone? I would say uh, try to hire someone within like your fourth event because by the time you're at a fourth event, maybe you had an assistant with you that has the potential to show up by themselves and then grow from there. Because my thing is try to find people to replace what you're currently doing as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Once you learn how to do that, not only do you become a leader, but you have become a visionary because you don't stay stuck in one place. And so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Victor for being on the podcast. This is his, uh, his second time, but, you know, Victor is, like I said, he is a doer. He gets <laughs> shit done. I want you guys to get shit done. I want you guys to rewatch this video 
and revisit some of the conversations me and Victor had. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, some of these topics are going to bring about new questions. Put your comments, uh, questions in the comment box below. All right. I'm going to do my very best to answer some of those questions, maybe even take some of those questions and answer them podcast style or video style. So thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, this is United Photo Booth, a Canary Capital production. You guys stay blessed. Good luck on your next event. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, of course, man. Peace, guys. All right.